Hi, in this video, we are going to talk about oxidation of poly and monounsaturated fatty acids. Now, if we talk about fatty acids that are present in human body, there are quite a lot of different types. For example, saturated fatty acid and monounsaturated fatty acid and polyunsaturated fatty acid. So what are exactly these classifications? So these classifications are based on whether they have unsaturation in their moiety or not. For example, simply the presence of double bonds. In case of palmitic acid, which is an example of saturated fatty acid, you have no double bond in this whole molecule. But in case of MUFA or monounsaturated fatty acid, whose great example is oleic acid, has a particular one double bond at ninth position. In case of PUFA, which is polyunsaturated fatty acid, which has more than one double bond present in ninth and twelfth location, is known as polyunsaturated fatty acid, such as linoleic acid or linoleic acid, etc. So, we are going to talk about how the oxidation of all these different type of fatty acid takes place. Now, when we try to understand this process, we should ask two questions. First of all, does the catabolism of saturated fatty acid and unsaturated fatty acids take place in the similar fashion, similar place, and the enzymes which are used are similar or not? Second, we should also ask, is there any distinct machinery for oxidation of different subtypes of fatty acids or there is a universal machinery which takes care about all of these things? And the answer is overall machinery for fatty acid oxidation is pretty much conserved throughout the species and throughout the animal kingdom. But the way you oxidize polyunsaturated and monounsaturated fatty acid is a bit different. So there are some special enzymes which play a crucial role in this process and we have to learn about those enzymes to understand this process better. So just to remind you about the beta oxidation process of fatty acid and in this first example we are going to take an example of saturated one before looking at uh, unsaturated fatty acid. So in this case look at it. So this is a palmitoyl CoA which is derived from palmitic acid, a 16 carbon one, right? Palmitoyl CoA is converted to trans to enoyl CoA. Look at that beta carbon. Number of hydrogen has been reduced and the enzyme that triggers this reaction is known as acyl CoA dehydrogenase. As the name suggests, it performs dehydrogenation or oxidation. In this process, FADH2 is produced. Further, trans 2 enoyl coa is converted to beta hydroxy acyl coa. Look at the beta carbon. There is a hydroxy group now. That means it is further oxidized and the enzyme is enoyl coa hydratase. Further, it gets converted to beta ketoacyl coa. Now, from alcohol group, it becomes a ketone. And the enzyme is beta hydroxy acyl coa dehydrogenase. Ultimately, with the help of thiolase, one molecule of acetyl CoA is released and it forms an acyl CoA. So, from palmitoyl CoA, after one cycle of beta oxidation, meristoyl CoA, which is a 14 carbon compound, would be generated. And this cycle would go on and on, and each step, one molecule of acetyl CoA would go out. So, just to, uh, just to give you a quick idea, 16 carbon palmitoyl CoA would ultimately gener generate 8 molecules of acetyl CoA. That acetyl CoA can be used in different biochemical processes such as Krebs cycle or maybe that acetyl CoA can be used for ketone body generation. But all these things are important to understand when we are understanding the beta oxidation pathway. So it's a 4 step enzymatic process and henceforth we are going to simplify that just by saying beta oxidation. So let's look at what are the steps which are different in case of a poly or monounsaturated fatty acid. Just to keep things simple, let's begin with the monounsaturated fatty acid first, right? So 
let's talk about the oxidation of monounsaturated fat. And just to give you a quick idea that monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fatty acids are present in avocado, almond, olive, other dry fruits, olive oil, dark chocolate, etc. So these are the great source of monounsaturated fatty acids. Now, olate is an abundant 18 carbon monounsaturated fatty acid which has an unsaturation that means a double bond between carbon 9 and carbon 10 depicted here in red. Now let's look at the oxidation process of olate to understand. So first of all olate needs to get inside the mitochondria. The process is very similar. It would become olyl-CoA with the help of transferase enzyme right and it would be it would be taken inside the mitochondria by carnitine shuttle system. If you don't know about carnitine shuttle system do watch my biochemistry playlist and learn about carnitine shuttle system which is a crucial shuttle system for fatty acids. Now the olyl-CoA would undergo three rounds of beta oxidation. I mean each four step processes are depicted by one arrow in this particular example and after three rounds of beta oxidation process what would be generated is known as cis delta 3 dodecanoyl CoA and three molecules of acetyl CoA would be released right because each cycle of beta oxidation generates one molecule of acetyl CoA three molecules of acetyl CoA is now released from there cis 3 dodecanoyl CoA is acted upon by a specific enzyme which is known as delta 3 delta 2 enoyl CoA isomerase. So overall isomerase and reductase enzymes are key players for oxidation of unsaturated fatty acids. This isomerase enzyme would change the double bond location in, in, between, del, in between second and third carbon. You can look at this structure right now and it would form a trans 3 dodecanoyl coa previously it was a cis isomer now it would be a trans isomer and the arrow depicts that it's a trans after that there would be five rounds of beta oxidation again now five rounds of beta oxidation would generate ultimately six molecules of um fatty acid right six molecules of acetyl coa sorry six molecules of acetyl coa and all of these acetyl coa would ultimately be utilized in energy production or maybe in ketone body synthesis so now we looked at how mufa or monounsaturated fatty acid oxidation takes place so let's look at pufa but before that i wanted to talk about the key aspect that we need to remember when we are talking about monounsaturated fatty acid oxidation here the double bond location the, the cis isomer, the, the cis format or cis 3 dodecanoyl coa cannot be recognized by enoyl coa hydratase. So far the reaction cannot take place. That is why and then and there the isomerase enzyme comes into the picture. It forms a trans isomer which can be further detected by enoyl coa hydratase and as a result further reaction can take place. Now we talk about oxidation of polyunsaturated fatty acid. So all the oily fish such as salmon, tuna, eggs, chia seeds, flax seeds, almond, walnuts, all of these things are very good source of polyunsaturated fatty acid. One popular polyunsaturated fatty acid is linoleyl CoA or lin linoleyl linoleic acid. Linoleic acid would form linoleic CoA and it has double bond in two distinct position in 9th and 12th position. So let's look at what happens. So here also there are several enzymes, several isomerase and reductase enzymes which are unique for and which are unique and crucial for PUFA oxidation. So first of all few rounds of fatty acid oxidation would take place, three rounds and after that three acetyl CoA molecules would be ejected. After that there would be conversion of the double bond 
using 2,3-enoyl-CoA isomerase. It would convert cis form to the trans form. Then 2,4-dienoyl-CoA reductase followed by enoyl-CoA isomerase together would shift the double bond location and change the type of isomer. Mostly they would convert it into a trans isomer which are recognized by the enzymes present in our body. Once this conversion is done, it would be ultimately running the same conventional beta oxidation process, which would ultimately generate several molecules of acetyl CoA. And these acetyl CoA could be channeled into citric acid cycle or maybe in ketone body biosynthesis. Want to know more about ketone bi body biosynthesis and how ketone bodies are utilized? So look at my biochemistry playlist. I have elaborated videos about ketone body metabolism and how it is important. Now I wanted to tell you that the triglycerides, which is a storable form of fat which is stored inside our um, adipose tissue might not have saturated fatty acid as such. It might also have PUFA and MUFA as their component. So all of these adipose tissue, adipose tissue triglycerides could have PUFA, MUFA and also saturated fatty acid and there is a mixture of all of these things. Now whenever there is a starvation situation, these fatty acids are freed up. So the glycerol is broken. So the glycerol and the fatty acids are broken down from triglyceride. Glycerol is channeled for neoglucose genesis purpose. But these fatty acid is transported to liver such that oxidation of the fatty acid can take place. And now we learn and appreciate the difference between saturated and unsaturated fatty acid oxidation process. So we covered quite a lot of aspects of fatty acid oxidation in this video. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And thank you for watching. Thank you.